there's the script was actually one I had shelved. It was called uh, Bound, I believe, or remember it was Bound mm-hmm. Doll or something like right. that. And it was an old script that I had, and I go, well, you know what? I've got this. Dan and I were talking about possibly making a horror film, and I said, well, I've done a few horror scripts, and we had a couple that had well. Darklings had a lot of special effects, creatures, and we didn't want to go down that road. We beat it up a little bit and started looking at some new storylines and kind of it emerged into something different, didn't it? So that script went through, good God, 20 renditions before we got oh, to 20 or 30 <laughs> renditions. Yeah. Before, yeah. We, before we got, every time they print out a script, oh I bring goodness. in a new one. I got a new script. <laughs> oh. yeah. But it's a young man who returns home after 20 years of, of, of being away from the small town. And when he comes back to, as part of his therapy, he's kind of closed down this house, move on, move forward with his, with his wife. And uh, when he comes back, all these things start happening in this he, small town. He's in therapy because he witnessed the he's murder. He's in therapy of his because he witnessed the murder of his mother. He's been in therapy for 20 years. He's not getting any better. When he comes back, then all these things start happening, and he becomes the focus of the investigation on all these this string of murders in this small town. But of course, it weaves into a much bigger story. You and know? It's not the little slasher horror movie. That no, you it see, isn't. You know? and no, no. It's really we wanted it to be a, a more intellectual type movie, but we also want to kill people. The first day, we're, we're looking at these actors, and I was telling Dan, I was really getting concerned. There was nobody showing up that, that was could even pull anything of the, anything off in the we didn't have anybody and I thought this is really not going to work it's going to bust it's just going to be a bad idea going wrong and up drives Jeff on his bike with his bandana and he wants to come in and audition for the doctor <laughs> and I'm like right that's going to work and he blew us away in fact it, he did so well that piece was actually showed up on the the, the, news. Ten, well, the 10 o'clock news of him killing his wife. Yeah, and they called it a song. Know how I need to be late. No, dear. I am. <laughs> I want to see your face as I strangle your wife on you. I've got it up with you. Hurry up and die. You know how I need to be late. And when he did that, I said, you know what? This might actually work. What's your background? Um, theater primarily. I did theater in Chicago. Um, did some things out here, some small video projects in the Rockford area. I moved here about 21 years ago. Um, just kind of uh, gave up a bit on just raised my family and uh, work with my kids. And I, I used to enjoy it a lot when I was younger and kind of gave it up to do construction and do other things. And still did little sniglets here and there with church and some other groups. and. Um, I had some fun with it, but I always kept it in the back burners. And my daughter and I kind of had a long conversation one day and told me to get back into it. And this is the end result is a little bit of, of film time, and then this came along, and it was cool, really cool. And that's one of the things they tell you in independent filmmaking. If you can't get a Hollywood actor, you get somebody that's really a, a good caliber actor, hire people to look like the part. So if you look at a lot of the characters in our film, we kind of tried to stick to that rule. We really did want these people to look like a like cab the, driver, like a cab driver, oh, like, like a sheriff, like a, like, a, like a you know a psychiatrist, yeah. like a rich bitch wife, mm-hmm. you know. So if you look at these people, they do look like that. Even I mean, if you look at uh, uh, James, you look at Nick Lang, mm-hmm. it's James. Yeah, he's not like a model. No, he's got that something brewing underneath. Mm-hmm. If you look at him. He's got that. He's got the troubled soul. He's got that troubled look. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. He plays his part well. We saw that. We knew he was kind of rough. We knew he was kind of rough, but we like we knew there's something underneath that would fit the character. Yeah, it was it was really kind of nice seeing some of these actors really step up. I mean, like Tommy when he he was the bartender. Yeah. Yeah. He had had one line. Yeah. What do you have? And since our our sheriff kind of moved out, the one we had for the movie. Yeah. Tommy stepped up to take his place for that day to read his lines. Yeah. And every week he kept getting better yeah. and better. And then the next and thing you know, he became the deputy. And he Tommy was, so good. was yeah. one of the big surprises. I mean, he had one line, what are you going to have? Or, yeah. or what do you have? Whatever, you know, who's a bartender. And the girls are going, he's so cute. Yeah, yeah. I did. I he's did so cute. Him. Let's make him the deputy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chief, hey, hey, what are you guys doing? Deputy Waters, is it true she was found bound like the woman, the Harrison woman, 20 years ago? I cannot comment on an ongoing investigation. The town needs to know. Town can wait. Step back. 
So Dan and I had a lot of conversations about that. How do we take local people and convince them they can do this? That's uh, Saturday, that rehearsal, when Jack came in and wrote Believe on the board. Mm -hmm. And we went through the whole thing when, when Jack and I got in an argument, everybody believed we were fighting. Mm -hmm. And then Jack turned around and tells them, we're not the actors, you are. And if we can do something that you can believe, you can do something that everybody can believe. It's very strange. <coughs> Fate and luck of brothers, they create your destiny. Fate and luck of brothers, they create your destiny. If you don't have fate, you are stuck between what has been and what will never be. I think that was the biggest, I think from that point forward, it was so good, they were so believable, and they could carry the film. And at that point, Dan and I go, I think we can shoot a movie, we just need a good camera. I mean, we're, you know, we're low budget, we're no budget. So we had to have some camera that was cheap enough that we could acquire that looked like film, and that's when Panasonic came out with that AF100. And they came out with that in December, so we basically had to basically start shuffling equipment and selling whatever we you know we weren't going to be using, and trying to get enough money to go ahead and get that purchase done, and start looking at it. Mm -hmm. And you saw that you've seen the product. I mean, it's got a very good looking product. So we used a model that's um, based on a, a lot of ways that Hollywood makes film. I mean, we departmentalize stuff. I mean, Brenda did production management with my sister. Okay, I'm Brenda Young, and. Um the production manager so i do a lot of behind the scenes i um we work on all the call sheets and try to figure out what we're scheduling for the day um, we work on wardrobe um, there's so many different wardrobes for different scenes because we never shoot in the same kind of order so we work on all the wardrobe the, we work on the food feeding the actors um, the scripts, we're always changing the scripts from day to day. You just, you know, we want to be prepared for the scenes we're shooting. Um, a lot of the behind the scenes, that's what we do. I'm the assistant director, but I do a lot of different things. Um, and I'm just very, very excited about this movie starting. Well, Jack is my brother. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that or not. No, but I did not. Yeah, so this is a family um, thing that we've decided to try to do together. So we all thought we'd try to be a part of it and do what we could do. We work about 16 hours a day, so even though actors arrive, when they do, we're here hours before that, doing the call sheets, getting everything ready, and then afterwards we have a little short meeting and think about what happened that day, what we need to catch up on, what we need to do the next day, so sometimes we don't get home to about 1 or 2 in the morning. Well, my name is Doug Skrinski, and I'm a special effects makeup artist for this film, and um, my sister works with actually Patty. Um, one of the sisters from the production and she uh, is the one that contacted me about doing the special effects for this and uh, basically today we're creating a, it's a corpse on a slate that's been dead for like 20 years and uh, so we're actually gonna make her look rotted and what we're gonna do is add like a little bit of bone structure into her face and into her arms uh, and then we're gonna add some blackening to her teeth to kind of rot a little bit and do some stuff uh, blackening with her tongue so this way, because it's the darkening, so what we want to do is we want to get that effect of when she opens her mouth and gets right in front of the camera, we want that, uh, you know, good dark black effect in her. He's coming for you. So we really wanted people to focus on, you know, getting their job right and getting this stuff done. So we took it very seriously, and we have a high bar, and I have big expectations and I think when you do that with or without funding based on your expectations and based on where you set your bar you get a different product. Well I think the first thing after we got the actors ready we had to do locations and that yeah. was really hard to do locations because then you go to the community and you're asking free. You're asking for yeah, free services. Right. You're asking for a place to use free. Right. And the community came up with it. I think, I think the thing is, I think we always try to be very professional. Yes. We, we got made sure we had, uh, you know, a million dollars liability insurance. We wrote our contracts. Yes. Uh, tried to be very uh, 
straightforward. That's the thing we try to do is straightforward about how we approach the location, what we're going to use it for, we what, told them the truth, what too. kind of scene yeah. they're going to be expecting us to shoot there. There's no nudity, you know, because we had people concerned about nudity, right. like, are they going to be getting nude? Well, one had to be in the contract. Yeah, it had to be in one of our contracts. Mm -hmm. My dad had always said, you don't need millions of dollars. You just need to tell a good story. After my dad passed, one of our brothers came up to me and said, Dad said, just tell a good story. Let's make a movie. And I go, it takes more than a good story. It takes a lot of money. Dad said we didn't need all that money. We just need to tell a good story. So that's why we did it. Came back to what we thought we were pretty good at. And so honoring my dad to tell a good story. <laughs>